Hey guys, Roger with Fat Fender Garage. This is episode three of the Revival Series. We are in the Revival Series assembly line here in Gilbert, Arizona. We've got a couple of new faces to the mix, a couple of uh, trucks that you've already seen. Big focus on today's episode is the 1967 Ford F100. We've actually got four of them in the shop right now coming through the Revival Series line in different stages. This one here is just kind of out of the way for right now, technically in the fabrication stage. We've raised the bed floor. This is on our level two chassis, so it's sitting lower as you can see. Uh, this one's actually getting a wood bed floor, which is pretty cool. But we still got some metal working to do. Uh, this, this one's getting painted, so it is going to be our gold edition revival series. And like I said, it's just kind of out of the way right now. We are also in the midst of tearing down a 67 F100. As you can see behind me here, cab just came off of this one today. So in the midst of the teardown, uh, the customer has let us know there's going to be a lot of things that have already been done to the truck that we don't have to touch. Theoretically, we can just slam it right through the assembly line. This is the beauty of the Revival Series is you can kind of pick and choose. You don't have to be the exact same thing every single time. So like we showed you here, we can get you painted or you can bring it to us painted or we can do patina. Whatever you want, we're down to do it. This particular example should allow us to get right in line for assembly. So Body's gonna go on to the new Porterbilt chassis. The uh, supercharged platform is going to make this thing an incredible sleeper. And talking about our third 67 F100 that's currently in the line, you guys have seen this one a little bit. Uh, we are in the midst of finishing up fabrication. We are actually going to be taking the body back off of chassis, cleaning up that firewall, getting it all painted to match the exterior color, and then we start to assemble. In front of us, we've got the custom inner tubs that had to be fabricated. Again, this is another level two chassis. Everything sits down low, which means we have to use a custom set of inner tubs on the front, our Fat Fender Garage hood hinges, and all the goodies to go along with it. So next time you see this truck, we'll likely have a coat of paint on the firewall uh, and hopefully being go back together. We're on kind of a tight deadline with this one. Tight deadline being that the client is looking to have this truck appear in his wedding. Uh, so both he and his uh, soon-to-be wife came to drop the truck off themselves. Really cool moment. Uh, and so we're looking to have this thing done for that special day of theirs. So no pressure, uh, but uh, that is our goal to have it done in time for their big day. So likely uh, the next few episodes are going to be boom, boom, boom. You're gonna see a lot of assembly in a lot of uh, short time. All right, we're here with Ryan. Ryan's one of our wiring guys out in the shop. And we're back at the 1960 Gold Edition. This thing is really coming together in, uh, in a superb way. Ryan's definitely taken the lead and done a masterful job of all the wiring. So Ryan, where are we at on this thing in terms of what's left, do you think? Uh, basically, uh, all the wiring is done except for the front lighting because we're waiting for the grill to get refinished. I have a, a harness here that I need to shorten still, but all the, all the interior wiring is done. We've started the engine and run it, and we've actually pulled the initial file out, sent it to the tuner, and got a tune back and put it in there and fired it again after that. Awesome, it's coming together nicely. So you said that the interior wiring is all done. Yeah. I know we were talking a little bit about these gauges. It sounds like we're waiting on a few different uh, finishes to be completed before we can start doing final install. Run us through that in terms of the gauges, in terms of like what we're looking for there. Well, the gauge pod is a, is a uh, set of gauges that the owner supplied to us. And those are all wired up. I've got them on the shelf over there. I can show them to you. There's a connector hiding in here that, that we would just connect to the gauge pod. As soon as we get the dash bezel back and we can mount the gauge pod in that, we'll, we'll plug the gauges in and, and they'll be in. Everything else in here is done. We've got the wiring back here ready for the amp and the speaker box. The dome lights in. We've got the door switches still waiting to, to see those come in so that the dome light will work when the doors open. But the radio is all wired up, the air conditioning is all wired up. We even wired in, the customer wanted this emergency flasher knob with the indicator light right here. And we got that all wired up. So that's that a bit of a factory original touch right there. Right, huh? yeah. I think it was an option maybe not available on this truck. I think it's from a later model, but he liked it and wanted it in there. So Very cool. we made that work. Awesome. Yeah, so it sounds like we're about ready to uh, leave the line and head to the interior uh, very soon here. So this is our last position in the Revival Series assembly line. We'll turn the corner and we'll get the interior going here probably in the next couple of weeks. This one is very, very close. I know that our client is anxiously awaiting the ability to go drive and, and so are we. We can't wait to turn this over and let them have some fun in it. So thanks, Ryan. I found my 
gray fat fender shirt, shorts, twin here today. You all know Spencer. Not available for sale, yeah. unless you want to come work for us. <laughs> so Spencer's out here. We're going to talk a little bit about the evolution of this crew cab, another one that's in our Revival series. Still have some final tweaks being made to the chassis, but I think last time you saw this, Spencer, we were in the body shop doing some work on the firewall. So yeah. talk a little bit about where we're at now. Yeah, I mean, uh, you guys are probably a little bit familiar with this thing. Uh, 79 F-250 Ranger XLT. Just recently got the firewall painted. If you want to come look over here, you'll see some of this stuff. But like, kind of like we talked about last video, really easy to lose in translation, but a lot of holes in the firewall that we had to do the body work, repatch, and then we just fully painted it, matched it to the color of the truck. So the only two that you're basically left over with is a cutout for your steering column. Uh, we'll put our nice steering column kit in there with a firewall piece. We'll have these available for dent side soon. And then our brake booster, master cylinder, all that's gonna mount into these holes here. So we make nice bracketry for the firewall there. Pretty key part of the Revival series as an option that people don't fully understand when they're talking about what these things cost and kind of what they're gonna be into it. Big part of that is gonna be the firewall getting painted, do all the body work to cover all the holes and then the undercoating as well. So you look down here and see the contrast. This has all been lined. It's all very sturdy, very tough. It'll take pretty much as many rock chips as you could ever throw at this thing. And uh, odds are with the new four wheel drive chassis, he's gonna be taking it off road. So undercoating the full underside of the bed, the cab, the inner fender wells, super important to us if we're gonna be doing this. Not completely required. So if you're on a budget and you wanna save a little bit of money, you can skim the firewall, the undercoating, some of the less uh, structurally important things. Once the motor's in here, everything's installed. This will just be an afterthought, but when it comes to the customer, it's actually very important because if you had a stock firewall, you'd notice pretty clearly. So uh, I don't know if we can find one around here as a reference point, but I think that this truck over here might have a stock firewall as a comparison. Nice. Our unreleased hood hinges, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Actually, could be kind of cool if you want to look at it. It might be letting the cat out of the bag too early, so. So this is another 7379 truck. This is actually one we're using for testing right now on our upcoming hood hinges. But this is a good example of what a factory firewall looks like. This one, a lot of the holes are still technically filled by factory components. However, when you're getting into a swap, they will not be, which means that all of these holes that you're looking at around here are just gonna be left wide open. So if they were to do a resto mod swap on this truck, which again, we're only using this for testing our hood hinges. This will remain factory, but let's say this customer wanted to dive into a swap and do a full fuel injection build where they're transitioning over. All that stuff on the firewall is just gonna leave you a bunch of holes and a bunch of crap. This thing even looks kind of clean in comparison to, to other factory firewalls and still pretty dirty. Um, it's pretty ugly. So if you imagine, you know, you have your new fender wells in here, you have a brand new badass coyote sitting in here all new components and then your firewall looks like that and has all those holes in it. It's almost like a, a wart on like a super hot girl is probably how I would describe it. If you're on the budget, you're wanting to do a revival series, but you don't want to spend the full amount for everything included, the undercoating and the firewall portion of things you don't have to go with, but kind of like we were saying, makes a big difference when it's done. This is a sneak peek. These are the first test articles of our 7379 hood hinges. Um, again, test article might have some adjustments to make. Please don't judge. But these are something that we already made for 67, 72 trucks, and they've worked out super well. They've kind of filled a hole that didn't otherwise exist in the industry. Since releasing them, we've had a lot of people ask about 73, 79. So we basically made a new pad for the firewall. These are specific to the hood. Very sturdy, all billet aluminum. So that's kind of a cool little sneak peek at something we have coming out. I know that our guys installed these yesterday. Um, they might make a couple of small tweaks. We'll send them out, get orders in, and then uh, we'll have them on the website ready for you guys to purchase. So just keep an eye out for that. It's another cool thing we have coming out. Shout out Dan Maxwell, local to the Phoenix area, does a lot of these cool trucks and he was able to uh, let us use this for some R&D testing in exchange for a good rate on some of these hood hinges. So shout out Dan, really appreciate you and how you help us out. All right, cool things going on in the paint booth. So the bed of that truck we just talked about outside is actually in here getting undercoated. The bed has been bedlined and the uh, underside of the bed is getting um, bedlined right now. <laughs> that was funny. So short story, Junior doesn't like us. He's told us to get out. I guess they have to do work or something. So another example of a uh, firewall painted to match the exterior. This particular truck was orangish at some point in time. Uh, he requested that since he's got this brand new, beautiful coyote under the hood for everything else to kind of look matchy matchy and, and clean it up. So we did that. We went ahead and did our, our satin white on the firewall, night and day difference there. And then obviously this is not a new chassis. This is a stock chassis that this high boy is sitting on, uh, but we have, Put a coyote in it. We're the coyote swap uh, king. So 
Spencer, why don't you talk a little bit about how we can fit a Coyote onto a factory chassis? For sure, yeah. Well, I guess to back up, we posted an Instagram video of this when we first mocked up the Coyote, and that's everyone gave us crap about the firewall. The amount of people that commented, gotta paint the firewall, gotta paint the firewall. Well, for all of you enthusiasts out here, here's said <laughs> there, painted there firewall. It is, yeah. yeah, so when we talk about like a, a wart on a good looking chick, that's what we mean. Because when this thing had the orangish, ugly, rusted looking firewall, I mean, you guys all had something to say about it. So I can imagine that it's pretty important to some people. But to Roger's point, this is a factory chassis. So the customer provided this. It looked like he had some sort of upgraded front suspension on it as well. So Coyote's gonna be tight in here for sure. It's not gonna fit as cleanly or as pretty as a Porterville chassis, but it is possible. Um, and we actually sell quite a few parts to kind of make that work. So this is, I believe a replacement, but it's the same style as a factory steering box. And uh, this is a factory frame rail. As you can see, if you get in there, we cut out a small chunk for the alternator, quite literally the smallest of little shims to get that. Uh, and it would have cleared normally. It's just giving you a little bit of space in case you need to get behind it or anything like that. Short story is it fits, which is really cool and kind of crazy. What's not on there now that will be is our FFG headers. So this is basically the Fat Fender Garage motor mount kit, our aftermarket headers on this thing, a couple other goodies. And then this is uh, a replaced core support. So the OEM one's a little bit crappy. It's pretty common on these trucks is it'll be bent, twisted, something's wrong with it. Normally we'll replace it with something new. Even though this one's a little bit more of like a dumbed down revival series, doesn't have the portable frame, just a stock frame. Same kind of thing applies. We tried to set ourselves up where everything was somewhat fell in the same system. So if it is portable frame, factory chassis, as long as you're using our parts or our system, everything should go pretty smoothly, and this is a pretty good example of that. Our motor mounts offset the motor an inch and a half to the passenger side, same way that Ford did. So on our Porterville chassis, we actually did the same track width to line up with the Ford stuff. So if you're doing a Coyote swap in a Porterville chassis or the stock chassis, our motor mounts are going to put your motor in the right spot. Everything's going to line up the right way, and that's kind of the most important thing for us is the goal is it's all supposed to look original when it goes back together. So the thing you want to avoid at all costs is you jam the Coyote in there, you have to do a bunch of cutting and body work to get it to fit, and you have a hard time actually making it look aesthetically pleasing, let alone like it's supposed to be in there. So um, I think that's an extra layer of Coyote swapping that people tend to forget about. People say, what's my truck going to cost? And you know, you'll talk to them about price and kind of what goes into that. And, you know, we'll get some scoffs occasionally. We'll get guys that we talk to on the phone that uh, um, are just don't really understand why things get as expensive as they are or how involved they are. But it's one thing to swap a Coyote. If we wanted to take a, you know, 2009 Mustang or 2014 Mustang, take the cab off, weld some new body mounts, throw the truck on there, and then just cut it till it fit, it'd be a lot cheaper than doing this. But granted, quality is going to show, and it's going to look like it was a Mustang that somebody put a truck body on. So the idea of this is almost like, what if Ford had a factory option for a Coyote back in 1976, which is when this truck came out. So it's kind of the idea that we built all of our parts in this system with. Like I was saying, all these parts we do sell on our website, uh, fatfender.com. You can go there, check them out, but it just goes to show whether it's a Porterville chassis or a stock frame, as long as you're using the right stuff and you're using the right system, it is possible to do it and make it look nice, run well, kind of avoid those headaches. So, And I think to Spencer's point, there's all sorts of options we can do with these trucks. So it doesn't always have to be the brand new chassis. So if you've got something that you're looking to upgrade a original chassis with, sky's the limit. We could definitely sure. help you out. Bunch of miscellaneous parts in here that are going to go on the build, so don't judge the mess. It's actually, I think, kind of fun to show the in the middle of the process because it's, it's kind of boring to go from an old truck to a completed truck and not show you guys the little things. A lot of this stuff is about to get incorporated in this. So this is the uh, customer's ECU. This is our ECU box. We're just going to throw some spacers on there. Uh, we'll install that and then that'll go inside of his engine bay and uh, we'll go inside of one of his inner fender wells. So nice little cover for the ECU box. When I say little things, I mean I can't express enough how many little things there are. You could leave this ugly computer just hanging in there the way it is, but in my opinion, it's a lot of less aesthetically pleasing than a box that's going to match the color of uh, your Coyote and it's going to look a little cleaner. So behind us is going to be our chassis storage rack, I guess, what do we call this? A cantilever well, rack? Cantilever, yes, yeah. whatever we want to call it. Yeah, chassis rack. Chassis rack. Uh, this is just kind of a cool way we engineered to actually store these chassis. So these are all ones that have recently gotten done with production with Porterbilt. We're just either waiting on the customer's truck to get here to start work or uh, we're about to send it over to our assembly line to get outfitted with the Coyote, fuel lines, brake lines, all those goodies, brake suspension. We've got three of them that are actually Revival Series waiting in the wings. So once our assembly wow. line continues to clear out, they'll be up to bat next. Hopefully we'll get this on video in the future, but we have our shipping guys and Porterville shipping guys. So we have Jacob and Daniel, and then Porterville has Ryan. 
getting these things off this rack with the forklift is truly something to behold. It's like some America's Got Talent stuff it, right it there. It really is. Gives me a little bit of a heart attack, but we're batting 100. They haven't dropped a single one yet, so I think we're in pretty good shape. So another good example of the ride height levels. Obviously, as you can see, not all C notches are created equal. So this one's gonna have a, a quite a big jump to it. If I can even reach it. And then this one is gonna have significantly less. So when it comes to comparing ride heights, it's actually a pretty good example of uh, just right next to each other. You got your low and you got your not so low. So this is gonna be your level one. It's gonna be just around stock ride height, maybe an inch or two lower. And then this is definitely gonna put you on the ground or uh, at minimum, give you a good drop to your truck. Every Revival series starts its life with us with a Porterbilt frame. Unlike the one that we just talked to you guys about with the factory chassis, we will continue to do builds on stock frames. I just think we're gonna eventually coin a different term than Revival Series and kind of separate the two because in our language, if you're talking to us, Revival Series means we're gonna revive every performance aspect of your truck, which will always include the Porterbilt chassis. So again, for customers on a budget, we are still gonna do builds with Coyotes, Godzillas into a factory chassis. I just don't know if we'll fully qualify them as Revival because we are skimping them on a new chassis. Still good builds, they're still a lot of fun to drive, but for us, Revival means you're gonna have only the best of the best underneath the truck, so performance should be 1,000% brand new, which won't always be exactly the case with a factory frame, but you can get pretty close. But at the point that you're gonna invest all the money, pretty much all, always the way to go, so. Back where we started, uh, we've been talking through the shop today, and as you can see, our team doesn't mess around. Chassis is completely on its own, body is separated. Uh, so this is a glimpse at that 67 F100 original stuff that we're gonna be replacing. I actually didn't even know this Terra off had started yet. I've been in the office all day, so I didn't even know that the cab was off, let alone that since we've been walking around, they got the bed off too. So if you've uh, followed us on social media, uh, you'll know we actually got this truck here just a couple of weeks ago. When it showed up, the customer has already done the paint job to it. So the exterior of the truck, super cool, super clean looking truck. So if you were to see that truck on the street all put together, it would look probably pretty clean as is. But once you take it all apart and you see what you're left with, not so pretty. You could see the part that we need to pretty up. This yes. is the, yeah, the foundational definitely. pretty up. Yeah, if we were in the 70s, this would be the coolest, most badass, top of the line suspension out there on the market. But that was also when your grandpa was probably in high school. Uh, while it was at one point great technology and it does serve its purpose still, I myself have an older Ford truck and I probably don't have the uh, funds to switch out the frame at any time soon. So still runs and drives just fine. But if you want to compare it to a new vehicle, unfortunately the 50 year old rear leaf springs and front twin I-beam suspension is not going to get you there. Very good at the time, back in the 70s, like I said, this was the coolest. This was the new of the new, but since then, things have just gotten a lot better and uh, we'd be fools if we weren't progressing the same way that everyone else is. Pretty ugly, pretty sexy. The pretty part he could take care of ahead of time. We're just going to get rid of all of this lovely antique, uh, for lack of better term. Cool stuff though, cool to look at the technology, the old exhaust system running back here. You see the little exhaust hangers and your mufflers. Old cab mounts are in here. So back in the 70s, man, you were pimping if you had this setup. If you had Ford's twin I-beam suspension when they came out with it in the late 60s was the coolest thing on the line at the time. Grandpa was pimping in high school. Oh, Grandpa, Grandpa had the setup, man. Since then, it's been replaced and replaced and re-replaced. Not saying there's anything particularly wrong with it, it just improved. Things improved over time, technology got better, the world switched to more of a fuel injection, more modern drives train style. Twin I-beam is great, it serves its purpose. Uh, same with the rear leaf spring, but if you're wanting to do a high horsepower, nice daily driver build, this is not your answer. I do not think this would be a good foundation to have a daily driver truck. And if any one of you have owned these trucks and driven them or tried to drive them daily, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. The brakes are shot, the steering doesn't work, and it rides like you're off-roading at all times, which if you're into off-roading is really cool, but if you're into driving without problems, not, not so much. Well, that's all the time we got for today. Catch us next time. We're gonna have a lot more progress being made. Things are just happening every minute of every day in this shop. It's exciting to be a part of, and we can't wait to share some more. Uh, as always, hit us up on fatfender.com. Call us, email us. Spencer, what are all the methods to get in hold of touch with us? Call us, email us, go on our website, tell your mother about us, tell your grandmother about us, tell your friends about us. There it is. Tell your children about us, get them into Ford trucks. We love it. If it's a Ford truck, we either know about it, we have it, or we can tell you where to get it. We so, got you covered. Yeah, reach out to us for sure. And we just recently launched a new website, so look through that, see how we did. 
and it is very recent for us, past week or so that we released it. So anyone can catch any bugs out there, uh, we'll reward you for catching us with our pants down with like a free sticker pack or something. So don't comment, please just tell us. <laughs> just email us. Catch well, the Easter eggs and send it to us directly. Yes. If you ever have an opportunity to come down to the shop, we'd love to have you. We could not cover everything in here in four hours if we wanted to. So uh, we'd love to have you here in person, show you what we got. But again, if you can't make it to us in person, make sure that you go to our YouTube channel or Facebook our Instagram, go to fatbender.com, send us a form site, check out what we have available and uh, see how we can kind of help uh, revive your portrait.